This is Pauline Sutcliffe. I'm Diane Vitale, the director of the Stuart Sutcliffe Estate. Speak to us about the uh, choices that he made regarding his affiliation with the Beatles and then moving into working uh, with Palazzi and going to Hamburg. Can you just reflect on that a little bit for us? Absolutely. It's interesting because Palazzi, although an Italian by birth, was actually raised in Scotland. Stuart was actually born in Scotland himself. So it, it really was rather ironic that he should end up with a, uh, an Italian raised in Scotland tutor Absolutely. in one of the best German art schools in Germany. Um, many, many thanks, of course, to Astrid and Klaus for helping arrange all of that for him. Uh, and of course, that was the precursor to him uh, making a decision to actually leave the Beatles. His main passion in life, much as he loved music, was the visual arts. He was so, so happy to be back at art school and much as he wanted to stay with the Beatles. And remember, it was his decision to leave. Paul did not push him out. Um, George didn't push him out. Uh, there was none of that stuff about he wasn't good enough because in fact he actually was a very good bass guitarist. Isn't there a letter that references that from, from George? There is indeed. There's, there's more than one letter. There was, there's one from George published in one of the Genesis books that begs and pleads with Stuart to come back early from Germany because they've just got to have him back because they've got all these bookings now in the cavern. I mean, can you believe that? This is in George's own hand. But over time, all of that gets forgotten, I suppose. D doesn't he also reference something regarding the look and the, uh, styli the styling of the Beatles at the time? He does. He's, he, when asked, so what, what was Stuart's significance to the Beatles? And George says, well, I guess he was our art director. Okay. So this is a young man who, who can't not include art, whatever it is he's doing. It's been a puzzle to many people as to why someone as overtly, adolescently rebellious as John was at art school should be so connected to a very serious, making great progress, visual artist like Stuart. Why do you think that's the case? Uh, because they were so close and they both were the founders of the Beatles. And of course, we all know that Stuart named them and John corrected the spelling a little bit. Stuart had a certain kind of maturity and stability about him, uh, which John didn't possess. And he needed a structure to contain some of his huge excesses at the time. Now, obviously my brother found that all very exciting and daring, mm. and probably wished he could have done some of it himself. But my brother expressed his very differently. He expressed his by not doing what his marvelous lecturer, Nicholas Horsfield himself, a very good painter, wanted him to do, which was small scale landscapes and small scale uh, impressionist works. Because they were so darn good, it was difficult to over-challenge him and say, you're not obeying the rules, you're not, um, you know, you're, you're not behaving yourself, young man, you, you're you not, know? You're not staying in this very confined boundary that I've right, outlined right, for you. Right, right, he had his own way of, of rebelling, but it was so thoroughly acceptable. Because he was so good. A, because he was so good, and B, because he did everything he was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, his essays are just amazing. You know, he did every single requirement and began to play in the band. But to have such a, an amazing flowering between two apparent opposites, when in fact they were very similar, uh, they were men of huge passion. And back to the earlier questions about art and music. You know, Stuart still belonged to the romantic tradition. Right. And so did John. Even though 
they're screaming rock and roll at you in the, you know, we Reaper the Bun, uh, you know, in Hamburg. Um, they're, they're, they're love songs, aren't they? A lot of them. Uh, so they, they, they had one heck of a lot in common. We want to thank everyone for having us virtually at your museum and the mental health conference. Uh, we uh, appreciate attending and we hope you enjoy the, the exhibition. And I echo everything that Diane has said. It's been an absolute pleasure, a lot of hard work. And I would also like to thank the team who are here today doing this filming so that we can be present at the opening.